what we're going to push for is what the government said they were going to do and then promptly failed to do, which is um, following data, not dates. I think it's been really unfortunate that the, the Prime Minister, having said that they were going to follow data, not dates, promptly followed dates and raised people's hopes. Because, of course, everybody wants us to be open again. Everybody knows that, you know, we, we've had a very difficult year. People's mental health has struggled. People have struggled financially. It's been a very difficult time indeed. People longing to see their families again. But we have to be aware of the fact that the ver new variants are on the rise and we haven't given everyone their second vaccine yet and that's important so we urge the prime minister to look carefully at the data and to make an informed decision because too often over the last year and a bit the prime minister's delayed putting off hard decisions and let people down as a result with often very tragic consequences would you support more restrictions being introduced across the country I'm not sure that that's where the data is leading us at the moment. I think that where, where we're looking is trying to get this vaccine rolled out, which has been a fantastic success for our NHS and the scientists, trying to get that vaccine rollout to um, a, a greater stage um, as soon as possible. And I just really pay tribute to the fact that there have been so many NHS work workers working seven days a week, long hours, to get more vaccines out to more people as quickly as possible. And fantastic that the British public have taken them up on that. Mm. We we need to know what's going to happen, of course, but I urge the Prime Minister to step up, take those difficult decisions. They are difficult. That's the nature of government. Mm -hmm. But he's going to have to risk being unpopular, which is so difficult for this Prime Minister. Uh, and he, he seems very often to think more about his popularity and whether or not people like him than whether or not he's taken the right decision for the country, no matter how hard that is to do. And of course it's hard, but that's the business of government. Mm -hmm. And at the moment, they need to look at the evidence very carefully about how fast we're managing to get those vaccines into people because, of course, you need two doses plus 21 days for the full effect. Well, let's just talk about decisions that are right but unpopular. Local lockdowns are very unpopular, but they can stop the spread uh, from one area to another. So why was Labour so critical of the local restrictions that were admittedly announced very badly last week? Well, let's start with the fact they were announced very badly and people had to find out by osmosis and even local councillors and MPs were not informed, let alone consulted. That's not a good way to implement something. It's also really poor that the government, after having been told repeatedly, including from those areas, that if you ask people to isolate, but you haven't taken into account their loss of income, if they're on low wages or insecure jobs, it's going to be very difficult for an asymptomatic person to make that hard decision to stay at home but not be able to feed their family or pay rent. The government has repeatedly failed to heed those warnings and has continued to. So they added last week to poor communication with failure to look at what the real the problems are that people are having with some of those restrictions. And that's going to that's going to make it harder to halt the spread of the virus. But you're not imposed. You're not opposed in principle to the imposition of local restrictions. <laughs> I think local lockdowns have treated people very badly. And I think that across the entire country over the last year, many people have felt that local lockdowns were very unfair. And I think the underlying cause there is that because the government kept putting off difficult decisions based on, for instance, a full lockdown last March, again in the autumn, when we called for a circuit breaker because the scientific advice was pointing that way, when the government fails to take those difficult big decisions, they end up having to sneak in like they did last week, so effectively more small local lockdowns but without the proper support that's not good enough and it's not fair on local people who are really trying very hard well in his article in the observer your leader Keir Starmer has talked about the country needing strong leadership and there, and there not being any strong leadership at the moment how can he offer that well, for a start, because Keir is capable and has shown it time and time again of taking difficult decisions, of being able to absorb complicated information and quickly being able to assess that and understand what it means. We just take last summer as an example. There were numerous pieces of scientific advice from the government's own scientific advisors that were pointing in the direction of needing to be better prepared for autumn. Everybody understood that March was difficult, that it was new, even though there had been warnings in the pandemic preparedness review. The public generally accepted that the, the government was getting to know what was going on but by summer we knew more and what Keir Starmer offers is his ability to read synthesize understand information consult the relevant people listen to the experts and come to a difficult decision and in the autumn we called for under Keir's leadership that circuit breaker short lockdown which would have helped prevent further things getting much much worse the government poo-pooed it they mocked effectively mocking their own scientists as well as Keir Starmer that's not good leadership what we saw from Keir then was good 
good, well-informed leadership with gravitas and with an understanding also of what the British people were going through, which I'm afraid to say this government isn't showing. What British people are actually suffering when they are losing work or they're struggling to make rent or to, to mm. keep their families properly looked after. That's what Keir shows, is that right. understanding of what people are actually going through. But he has struggled with his leadership himself, hasn't he? I mean, he's had terrible people management problems in the past few weeks, uh, not least basically being held to ransom by Angela Rayner for 24 hours while she decided how many jobs she wanted. How, how is that uh, evidence of strong leadership? Well, over the last year, and um, fifth year and five months, I think, since the 2019 general election, which was a catastrophic result for Labour, it's been Keir's responsibility to turn that around. And we've moved from being a party that, frankly, in 2019, many people weren't even prepared to listen to, to a party that actually did um, well in a lot of places. A few weeks ago, we had disappointments in Hartlepool, but we won 11 out of 13 electoral mayoralties. We won, in, for instance, in the west of England, in my part of the world, in a seat that includes Jacob Rees-Mogg's conservative held seat. Mm. Now, that that's really impressive work and it's outcomes that matter it's what Keir's vision is for the country that matters and I think that that's what the the Labour Party but also the country is is seeing in Keir is that it's a man who's prepared to take difficult decisions but also has got a vision for this being the best country to grow up in and the best country to grow old in and do the hard yards of working out what that means in detail um, um, to fulfil that vision. It's interesting that uh, you talk about some positive results recently because something that uh, a lot of Labour people say to me uh, uh, privately is that the party needs to earn the right to be heard again uh, mm -hmm. after you know a number of, of very difficult years. Do you think Labour has earned the right to be heard yet? Well, the voters will be the judge of that. And I agree that the Labour Labour has to earn that right. Every politician should, every political party should never, ever, ever take for granted that there's a group of voters here or another group there that they can just count on without having to earn that trust. So it's not there We've yet. had a real job of work. It's not there yet. It was a big mountain to climb. As I said, I think there were some real marks in the road with 11 out of 13 electoral mayoralties um, that we won, including the first elected female metro mayor. That was fantastic in Tracy Braby, and I was proud to campaign for her. Mm. Um, but yes, we, we've still got more work to do and we're working very hard to make sure that we are ready uh, to earn the, the, the trust of the British people and step into government when the next general election comes. Because I know that we are able to do that. I know that we have the competency to do that. But in order to be given that right, we need to earn the voters' trust. If you haven't earned the right to be heard yet, are you not going to be releasing any policies? Because that, you've obviously made calls on how the government should be handling the pandemic, but you're not exactly you know, coming out with a grid of, of new policies that the, uh, the, that a Labour government would introduce, are you? Well, no party of opposition comes out with a full policy manifesto at this stage in any electoral cycle. But we have got we've got policies for COVID recovery. We've been challenging the government on their policy failures during the, the COVID year. We have we came out with a policy on green recovery and deep investment in good jobs that would help us with our economic recovery. And those are really substantial policy offers that we're making to the country because we know that this country is 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 really desperate for the strong leadership and investment in good jobs and particularly to attack the climate change crisis that we are also in. We can't ignore that crisis as we're coming out of the COVID crisis and we've put forward policies that would help address both at the same time and that there are others as well. The main thing is earning that trust back mm. and I think we have started to. I know that I had conversations in the last few months in the electoral campaigns that were a big shift from where we were in 2019. People who were prepared to listen to us again. Some of them are now voting for us again they aren't mm -hmm. all but we do have that work to do <laughs>